So, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode 29 of our West Country Warblings customer experience R&R &R with my good self, Richard Knight, and him over there. By the way. Well, no, actually, when now, now, because when you see it, when it's recorded and it's flipped round, I'm pointing the right way. Oh, right. <laughs> to the... <Yeah>. See? <laughs> Anyway, uh, <laughs> see Ryan this, up anyway. this is this is slick, as you can tell. Twenty nine episodes, we're bloody <laughs> awesome at this. It is really easy to do, <laughs> no, no problem. Right, let's get on with this before it goes completely wrong. Who are you talking yeah. to today, me, me Babber? Right, me Babber. So I I was talking to um, a, a very interesting young man called Ben Sterling, um, and Ben is the founder and managing director of a business called Made for Maturity, Made for Maturity. And um, he is a, an online user experience expert. Um, so it was a really interesting chat I had with Ben um, about how he sees um, the future of tech and, and how, um, how, he, how he's trying to help businesses yeah. um, ha have, a, have, a, have a really good user experience. So let, let's listen to what Ben's got to say. Excellent. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm delighted to have Ben Sterling with me uh, this morning talking about all things UX user experience. Um, and Ben, do you want to introduce yourself to our R&R &R listeners and watchers? Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Ryan, for having us uh, on the call. Um, yeah, so uh, like Ryan said, my name is Ben Sterling. Um, I run a, a UX web design agency. Uh, we're called Made with Maturity. Um, we're based in Plymouth in the south of Devon. And we work with clients, um, not just kind of regionally, but clients nationally as well. So, um, you know, we're a small outfit, we're a small agency. Um, we believe we carry a lot of experience and, you know, we really offer a lot. So that's why we can work with some of the larger kind of national brands. Um, but we really have got a heart for, for local and regional business as well. And some of the kind of the experience that we have around user experience, um, we really believe we can work you know with, with local businesses and regional businesses um, and offer them something which really works really helps them um, deliver digital platforms and websites that are really focus around their users needs so that's a little bit about us and um yes yeah, it's a pleasure to be on the call yeah sounds exciting um and it's really interesting isn't it um one of the things that we talk about a lot on this podcast um to, to be honest with you ben is businesses that are fleet of foot that are able to change the way they do things recognize from a client perspective or a customer perspective that um that, that i'll use the p word again that we've used throughout this word at uh, this uh, at this year the pivot word um so i would imagine a lot of your clients and, and and you've probably seen a lot of businesses that are that are using um the online experience to change their business model really quickly and you know we're recording this on the day that two of the biggest high street names in the uk are facing uh really sort of horrible horrible outcomes you know the arcadia group um and and then subsequently debenhams on the back of that you know are looking down the barrel of liquidation and it, it, you know certainly i my retail background would always say that you know you look at some of those big monoliths from the high street and they haven't been able to to change their user experience online quick enough have they to to capitalise with some of those pretenders to their throne, like Boohoo and, and and others, what's your view on that? Yeah, and you know what, it's it's really it's really sad, um, and I can't I can't comment you know comment on the details, um, you know what they've done or not done, um, but there is a general I think it, it's becoming so apparent, especially um, now we're in this kind of you know, this sort of COVID season, about just understanding you know what a user's needs are. Um, and how user behaviours have changed, and they change radically. And um, you know, we've seen the kind of the shift. Um, you know, we talk, people talk about digital transformation, and you talk about this kind of pivot year and people pivoting. Um, you know, many organisations have had you know long-term plans of how they're going to do their digital transformation, and how they're going to you know they're going to transform and they're going to make digital more of a central part of their business model. Um, and with kind of with COVID and, you know, all the season that we're in now, we're seeing, you know, a, that transition, maybe that plan of like five years being condensed down into kind of like, you know, three months. Um, there's a real, a real acceleration because I think everyone's realized that users' behaviors are different. People's behaviors are changing. Um, and having your finger on the pulse of knowing what those changes are 
is so key. And all the work that I know you guys do at Insight 6 um, with all the customer experience, um, it has such an overlap and a crossover when we come to UX and user experience. And we're really thinking about digital channels, um, mainly websites, but apps, you know, uh, email marketing, all kind of other digital channels and social. Um, and it's the extension of everything that you guys know and understand around, you know, customer experience and the research and the insights and it's how you extend that online and extend that into digital platforms. And that's the area that I see that a lot of brands just aren't quite getting right now. Um, obviously, there's a bit of work to be done, um, but it's not complete rocket science. It's not completely just, you know, a million miles away. It's just sitting down and understanding and making those links between you know, what's that kind of user experience that we have when people come into a shop and why do they choose to you know, purchase from our brand when they come into a store? Um, many times it's the same sort of things that you want to transfer online, um, but often the case is the online presence is just a, a transactional place and it doesn't carry a brand, it doesn't carry an emotion, it doesn't invite the customers to have a shared experience um, and there's lots of different ways and, and, and creative ways of kind of creating that experience. But that's often where we see the kind of the, se the separation that people have got. They've worked on their brand and they've worked on their customer experience and person to person. But when it goes digital, often it's become quite cold. Where the technology is there, um, it doesn't need to be cold. And the creativity is there, working with the right people in your in-house teams and agencies. It, it, there's, there's, a, there's a massive opportunity to make digital experiences warm, inviting. Um, and and to really convert. This, I'd like to explore that a bit further with you because this 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 you know having a warm experience on on uh, on a digital platform is from an experiential perspective um, is you know you can see brands that are getting that right. You can see brands that are measuring every touch point. You know I am staggered and and you know look we use Amazon all the time as an example, but I'm staggered at how. You know, if you're a prime customer, the fact that you can, you know, you can order something today, it's with you by tomorrow and you know every step of the way, even to the extent now where you get told it's three stops away. So you can, you can plan when you need to be down at the front. I mean, it, you know, who would who'd have known that, you know, 12 months ago? Yeah. Yeah. And you're right. And I think that's a, an amazing way of, of capturing how users expectations changing. Um, exactly. Okay, Twelve months ago, you know, you were happy for it. You, you're just happy for it to arrive next day. Um, you know, that, that was brilliant, wasn't it? You know, you ordered something on Prime, it arrived next day. Brilliant, amazing. Um, but now they're kind of you're just being informed. You, they're using technology in a way that's really human. Um, even though there's no human probably involved, um, you, know, you know, guiding that process. But the communication, just being informed, I feels like my hand's being held um, in a nice way, not in a patronising way. It's being held, it's being just, they're just, just telling me what, what time it's going to be there. Um, and, it, and it makes me feel valued as a user that they understand that my time is precious. Um, and because they can tell me it's going to be here between 6.15 and, and 5.12, um, you know, let us know if you're not going to be in. Um, you know, that just makes me feel really valued. Uh, and it's those things that's going to give me more brand loyalty, um, to give me a positive experience. And even if, you know, sometimes they're even going to be delayed and they'll just let me know. They're just like, oh, you know, we were going to be there, but, we, but it's just going to be, we're going to be 15 minutes late, you know, hopefully that's all right. Or, and it's just, it just makes me feel valued as a human, um, but they value my time. And it's those little touches that just bring that kind of brand loyalty. Um, and it's the things that, you know, people are going to be um, uh, valuable, but especially in these, in these, in these moments now, where the competition for these kind of businesses is fierce. Mm. These small elements that make me want to go back to that brand and purchase from them again. Um, and when we're looking at all those, those little things, um, it's, it's often it's a, it's a series of lots of little things that make me choose to go back to that brand again. Um, and some of the things that you know, we, we, we found is even things like... Um, you know, being able to invite someone into a brand. So it's like we're trying to create these warm experiences. Um, and what you usually expect is maybe you click on, I don't know, some, some search criteria, and then you sit there and you have a little loading bar going, and then, you know, 
don't know, five seconds later that the page appears. Um, but just kind of a, an inviting kind of animation that kind of is a little bit playful, that maybe links on the brand, that just invites me in and just, just kind of it entertains me for those three seconds while I'm waiting for something to load. Little things like that can just, because again, it just brings me closer to a brand and just gives me more warmth and more emotional connection. Um, even things like rollover animations, um, you know, just you roll over a button and so it's just changing color, you know, it maybe it animates slightly and when you roll out, it animates out. Just some of those little interactions and, and, and when you look at the brands, the, the digital and on, online brands that are really successful, um, not always, but often, especially if they're targeting, targeting maybe like millennial generations, um, it's those sort of things that those kind of audiences are kind of growing to expect. And especially with, you know, people just being so familiar with how apps work and the, you know, and the animations on apps and the screen transitions and things being slick. It's that kind of expectation that people bring when they're kind of now on online brands. Um, and you can see the ones that are adopting it and see the ones that aren't. And like I said earlier, it's not necessarily, it doesn't have to be massive rewrites. They can just be kind of these small kind of touch points of just being more human, being more emotional. Um, just how the website responds to small interactions. Um, and it's just about giving that human experience, a personalized experience. Um, and I really believe it's the brands that are, are adopting a human personalized experience the ones that will be successful in the future. One of the things that, that always fascinates me is, um, and I'll give you a live example. So um, one of the things I, I do in my spare time when I'm not um, helping people with their client experience or customer experiences is um, I joined a running club. Um, when I left Boots three years ago, I thought, well, I need to get fit. So I joined a running club and um, the, you know, everyone had these uh, Garmin watches. I thought, well, I'm, I'm going to get myself a running watch anyway. So I've, I've had this running watch for a number of years. Um, and I now decided I want a, a sort of a, a, a smarter watch that I can use to not only map my running, but, you know, I can um, pay with, I can stream my music through, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> now I'm 46. Okay. So I'm generation X. So I'm pre-internet. So I've, I remember life before, you know, all of this sort of online warmth that we're talking about, but, but n now for my generation, people that were probably many of us might have been late adopters to uh, the online user experience. We quite liked get walking into the high street and maybe buying stuff. I, I mean, of, of course, lockdown has driven some of these behaviors because you haven't been able to, but it's, it's forced uh, a change in, in the way I do things. So for example, I, I've spent weeks researching this particular model I want. Um, and I've been on lots of different apps looking at, so I've been on price runner. I've set up alerts when the price of the watch goes down and it's so easy. It's so simple. I'm just like, uh, you know, I had an alert the other day and I, oh, yeah, it's 50 quid cheaper and I bought it. Now, actually, that is a better experience, if I'm blunt, than me wandering around the high street, isn't it? Because, you know, if I wander around the high street and I look at three or four different shops and I'm, you know, walking into a shop going, well, you know, it's, I don't know, X amount of pounds here. Oh, I'm just going to walk down the other end of the city centre and it's two pound cheaper. I don't need to do that now, you know? And, and the experience, you know, as you describe it, was simple, it was easy, it, it did make me feel warm, so I thought, my God, I've got, a great, I've got a great deal, and it was so easy, and your point that you make about um, brands, that, brands that get that, get that right, um, I was looking at some traditional brands that will remain nameless, that were selling the same product, and uh, whilst their online experience was, was, was fine, and it was fine, there was no recognition of the, the value pyramid. So I'm sure the service would have been okay, probably wouldn't have been as cheap. Um, but there was, there was the, you know, the third bit of it, the kind of the expertise bit where they would have probably made their name in the past. They didn't really shout about that either. So that, you know, there's a real miss in this kind of value proposition for some of those more tra traditional brands. And you know, in the end, I bought this watch from a jewelers in York who had a great online presence they had three shops. They were focused. They worked hard on um, on the, on their user experience. And do you know what was really interesting? I popped it in their basket, and I'd come come out of it. And I come to be honest, I'd forgotten about it. And they rang to say, "You've got something in your basket. Can we help you? How do we get this over the line?" So not only did they use traditional, uh, not only did they use the, their new technologies, they picked up the phone and they interacted with me. And I and I thought, great, they clearly want the business. 
So that was a real mold of both, you know, great user experience online, coupled with some more traditional sales techniques to get the get the you know the purchase over the line, and they were cheaper than Amazon. Amazing, yeah, and it's true. I think what you described is, um, I think one of the pitfalls a lot of people fall into when they're thinking about how do we take this great physical shop experience and um, and the reason people come into a shop, how do we translate and replicate that online? And I think if you just kind of blindly think I'm going to replicate one for the other, you end up missing the reasons why digital is going to be better. Because you're always going to have, it'll always be a poor second experience. If you try and replicate your real world experience online, and people do it with kind of, you know, these kind of 3D walk-in rooms where you can go in and you can, you know, try things on in, in a weird kind of way, but it's never quite as good as going in and trying it on in the shop. Mm. Um, and it becomes a, just like a, a slightly disappointing second experience. Um, albeit there's definitely some things you do want to replicate. So things like your brand, things like, you know, the, the reason why someone would shop with you and why you're different. Um, you know, they're going to be, you're going to be giving those messages out in, in a physical store and you're going to need to give those messages out in a, in a online, a digital store. Um, but some of those things that you described of um, like the price checkers and, um, and just some of those kind of di di digital uh, tools that you don't get in an online store, it's about understanding what those are and working with you know, people who understand technology who can give a, a, a recommendation at the right time to answer a user's need um, that you can do better online that you can't do in a physical store. And it's those kind of interactions and transactions that make the digital experience way better. Mm -hmm. And I think that just that, just that journey you described um, just shows some of those ways that how digital is actually better than traditional. Um, and it's just about, yeah, it's just about understanding what those are and, um, and understanding what the options are. And it's gonna be different for every brand. Um, and this, you know, we harp on about it a lot at Major Maturity about the difference between um, knowledge, understanding, and maturity. And you know, we see there's loads of knowledge. There's loads of knowledge around, there's loads of data. Um, you know, everyone's talking about data. There's analytics coming out of our ears. You know, every client we speak to has always got data. Um, but so many people just kind of don't know what to do with the data. They don't understand it. They don't understand what that data means. Um, and having that understanding is so key and once you understand it having the maturity to apply it is the absolute critical final step and it's working with people like us people like yourself you know people you know there's many in-house people that are really big to get it as well but it's working with people that get it um, who can understand the technology and how to creatively apply a piece of technology that um, promotes that organization's brand and it promotes their product and their service and it makes it better for the end user. And once you connect all those dots and you start putting it in, it's just a matter of testing it, putting it in, test it, tweak it, test it. Um, and those are the brands, and you can see, you can see some, you know, you know every time you kind of go onto Amazon, um, you know, the, the, the interface is slightly different. They're, they're trying new things, they're trying to make things easier for us. Um, even kind of, you know, going through the, um, the kind of the buying experience about making things simpler each time. So, you know, I it came, just popped up to me the other day. I've seen you, you know, we've just moved house and they're saying we've seen you add um, this address a couple of times. You want to skip this step and always go to this address. Just things like that. It just makes yeah. you feel like, yeah, you value my time. Mm -hmm. And for me, and I'm, 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 you know, I'm only just one user um, and I always have to be careful. I'm not kind of, you know, have that user bias and making sure I'm filtering everything through myself. But just talking about me, you know, time for me is one of my most valuable precious assets um, and when brands understand about my time it makes me feel really valued um, and I think and I think that's quite that's quite broad I think there's lots of people that have time as a real kind of valuable asset for them. Um, so yeah I think brands that really kind of understand that and make that user experience more refined and more efficient I think are really definitely one step ahead but just also while I'm on talking about um, efficiencies around user experience, I think there's been a lot of, um, there's been a bit of, you know, a bit of bad press around sometimes user experience. And I've worked with a number of different agencies where they've worked with user experience specialists 
and um, especially creative agencies, and they've seen the kind of the UX guy as being the person who kind of strips out all the joy and all the warmth, <laughs> and they make it just transactional and as quick and as efficient as possible. Um, and while that's true to an extent, with, you know, user experience, we want to have efficient experiences. As users, we're emotional beings. As brands, brands are emotional organizations. There's a, there's a brand connection that's so integral and so important um, for every kind of for every user when they're trying to sell a product or sell a service. And um, to remove that brand, because that you know we don't want to do that. So when we're talking about user experience, it's not just about efficiencies. It's about involving a brand. It's about you know inviting someone in for this war, um, for them to feel cared for, for them to understand what a brand's values are. Um, and for me, that's just as as, as carries just weight, as, just as much weight as um as efficiency. So it's real that kind of blend, and that's the kind of UX that we're kind of talking about. So so with that in mind, what three tips, Ben, would you would you share with the listeners about the you know, as, as a UX expert, would you share with listeners for their business uh, that they, they should be aware of going into 2021? Yeah, yeah, good thinking. Um, well, the first thing, um, absolutely, and you've mentioned it already, is um, understanding your users' needs. So, and, that, and that, that's, that's quite a big tip because that's the central part of a, a user experience journey. Um, but if you can make that as a priority, how do I understand my users' needs? Um, and I guess if you can break that down into, into a few kind of sub points, this will probably end up being the three tips, um, is, you know, having conversations with your users. And that doesn't necessarily have to be one-to-one -one conversations. You know, you could, you know, have an email marketing database. I'm just thinking of kind of simple ways to do it, using something like a type form, you know, a free type form, um, you can put, you know, string a number of questions together um, and just invite, you know, simple kind of, you know, you know, out of 10, yes, no questions, simple questions, but also including some free text questions as well. Um, it's amazing the kind of the insights that you get when you're kind of asking a sort of slightly open-ended question. Yeah, yeah. Um, because we all come with bias and we all come with that assumption that you mentioned earlier, you know, with our own businesses and our clients' businesses, we assume that everyone sees it like we see it, but understanding that customers and users don't see it like we see it is a, is a, is a key step. Um, and giving them an opportunity to have a voice, um, there are some amazing insights. So that one there about kind of customers looking at what their users are. Um, the second one I would do is in terms of a UX experience is, um, is looking at competitors, taking that time to look at your competitors and what they're doing and what they're not doing. And just coming up with a, you know, I love, I love spreadsheets, I love tables, I love making things um, kind of concrete and just kind of what they're doing well, what they're doing not well, you know, what's, what's kind of, are they, where are they ahead of you? What can we learn from them? Um, and what are they not doing in terms of the things that we're finding out about our users right now and their needs? You know, what are our competitors not doing so we can make those leaps ahead? Um, and then the third one is just looking at your, um, just look at your brand. And um, I know it's kind of just moved probably a bit more into kind of branding um, and slightly away from UX, but it, all, but it all stitches up together. But looking at your brand, what makes you different? Um, you know, what gives you that ability um, to answer a need or to give a product which is going to be better than, you know, than your competitor? Um, and, then it's all, and then it's all the little things, all the little um, the things we talked earlier about the animations and the, the, the efficient user journey. Um, it's about kind of just ma and mapping that out and making sure it's efficient and then testing it and not being, not being a right, we've done this once now and um, we'll, we'll do it again in, you know, in, in a year's time. You know, just have that regular testing. Be open to, um, to be wrong. You know, test it. Be grown up enough to go, actually, what we thought was going to work was this, but actually what the data and the user feedback is telling us is this. And we need to adjust it, we need to enhance it, and we need to make those small adjustments um, until we see success. Great. Some great, great tips there, Ben. Look, um, I, how can people get hold of you um, if they want to hear more of what you've got to offer from in, in the UX world? Yeah, sure. So I'll, we've got a website. That's probably a, a nice starting point. We're called madewithmaturity.com. Um, I'm also quite active on LinkedIn. Uh, it's a good place to, uh, to get hold of me. 
My name is Ben Sterling. So if you search for me, look for this face. Brilliant. Fantastic. Um, ben, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you um, on our R&R series. Um, our, our last expert speaker of, of 2020. Uh, so one to hold on to there. And, you know, I know we're all looking forward to uh, a, a, maybe a less challenging and brighter 2021. So I'm sure with those user experience tips, businesses can really focus on their 2021 plans at, at every stage of their of their customer journey. So I want to thank you for your time and um, great to chat. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, thanks for having us on, Ryan. Thanks. So there he is, Mr. Ben Sterling. I'm loving you user experience, U UX, CX, EX, there's all the Xs, but actually there's really interesting stuff um, that was coming out of that. Um, really, really nice to hear about the warmth, the warmth of an experience you can have from technology and digital. Now that's a really interesting concept, isn't it? I didn't think we'd be going down that route, although we talk of wrapping it with love, as you mentioned your good self. Um, it's quite yeah. interesting that. What, what, what else What else from that conversation really sort of jumped, jumped out for you? So I, 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 I made notes and everything. I was exceedingly uh, focused on it because as, as our viewers and listeners will know, it's like the second part to our tech bit, wasn't it? So yeah. we spoke about the phones bit and the hardware and all that, well, hardware and software going in. But actually the user experience was really interesting in terms of that whole piece of user behaviours changing. The pandemic has altered the way we, our expectations. And we've mentioned that a number of times, haven't we? already we have. We but have. from a user experience point of view and that digital platform that's really interesting we've come on a pace uh, that whole digital planning not being five years in the making now it's gone down to three months and people have had to make changes really rapidly but it's meant changes in our expectations as users as well so therefore we can't just have an archaic website sat there anymore we can't just have a, a click button that doesn't work or isn't interesting and doesn't excite us as an experience because it still can online. Although it was quite interesting you were talking about the difference between that still the face-to-face -face experience and the online experience and the differences still between the two. You know, not trying to force digital into being the same as face-to-face. -face. But what I did like, and I'm sure our listeners will pick it up on that, is the fact that they, they, they can actually work together really well. Yeah. Um, your point about your buying your watch. What great example. You know, yeah. you've gone digital and then somebody human picks up that narrow telephone and speaks to E. Perfect. And, and, and converted the sale. And converted the sale. Yeah. Uh, the, the other point I'd make as well, and what was really interesting talking to him was um, Ben, he talks about this warmth point. Um, and he also talks about, didn't he? We, we, we were conversing about this kind of this, and you've referenced it there, this this massive move forward in, forward, uh, in use of technology. Um, and therefore, I, I, he, he talks about this. I think that people's user experience is very hit and miss. And almost people are expecting it to be hit and miss. So the amount of calls I go on to and they're like, oh, yeah, I, 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 struggle, I had trouble getting the, the Teams link or I couldn't get onto Zoom. Yeah. People kind of ex expect that now. And I think businesses that can make that really slick to Ben's point and they make that experience warm and engaging yeah. uh, in, in this new era of use of technology will 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 turbocharge your business um, uh, and the expectations will, will grow because, you know, look, we're recording this on the day that the, the we're recording this on the day, aren't we? Oh, we that are. Day. We are, yes. Yes, the first so, ones you know, have been ejected. Yeah, half past six this morning. Um, that that, that dear old lady was injected in Coventry. Um, but do you know what? The, even on the media today, there's a real sense of optimism and and, and um, engagement. In you know, let's let's get into the next new year. You know, let's get Christmas yeah. out of the way and move on. And you know, all of these. But what but what we mustn't forget, and uh, this is our you know, this is our space now, isn't it? In terms of making sure our listeners are on board with this, is don't drop the ball. Don't drop the ball as we go into next year. Don't make the same mistakes you made this year um, because you won't have an excuse. <laughs> well, as, as James Sale said in my interview a few weeks ago, um, you know, that, that is not an excuse. It's not an excuse, is it? You know, it's not saying, oh, well, it's COVID. We can't do these sort of things. Of course you can because businesses have proved that they can. I think the key thing and the one thing that I'd you know, like to leave us on in terms of what was going on from Ben's point of view and you, you, user experience, but I think it goes across every part, a facet of customer experience is efficiency and involvement. Yeah. 
are you providing your services, your products in an efficient manner? Because people are expecting that efficiency. Plus, they want to be involved in your brand. I love the way he talked about inviting the customer in, inviting you to be part of your brand as an organization. We love to be part of the bigger organizations of Apple, that whole sort of community. I've got my Apple phone. I'm going to be the first one to get it. Sorry for the stupid accent. I don't use Apple. So anyway, <laughs> there we go. They're strange people. But it's it's about being invited. It's being part of it, isn't it? Because then, you know, you, you enjoy the fact that you're clicking on a nice little button with a cartoon person and, and all those things that you refer to, the little things. But efficiency and involvement in 2021, you can't you can't get much simpler than that, can it really? And you, no. you've, you've got to you've got to know where you where you are now, where you want to get to and track track it all the way through, haven't you? As we always yeah. say. As yeah, for sure. So, so thought so, uh, great interview, great interview. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Ben, and and um, it was really good to do, uh, to collaborate with him on on that interview. So that, that's our last expert of the year, Rich, isn't it? It's our last expert of the year. You just got to put up with us for another week, or maybe a few more days. Oh, and what are we? What, <laughs> I'm very excited about the next one. What are we doing next? Yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna go and have a little taster, aren't we, of some of the West Country's finest ciders, and maybe and maybe some. Yeah. <laughs> this is all about the soda experience now. Um, so we're going to talk about um, our favourite ciders we like drinking. <laughs> and we've been geographically penned off, haven't we? So I'm looking at yeah. Devon and Cornwall and you're yeah. looking north of that. Yeah, Dorset, Dorset and Wiltshire. So we'll have a look at that. We haven't, we, yeah, we haven't actually, uh, we haven't covered the Somerset, the traditional one. So we thought we'd go a little bit left field in terms of that one. But also, whilst we are slugging down a few glasses of the finest uh, ciders, we thought we might give you a few top tips there to end the year as well. Just a little bit of a crimbo present in terms of a few top tips to take into 2021. So uh, that's yeah, what we're going to be yeah. doing. And uh, look forward to that. And we will see you all next week on whatever channel you are viewing us listening to us and hey don't forget like share and comment 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 see what you think comment <laughs> why not you know go on let's go for it <laughs> i've been rich knight i've been ryan huxtable cheers <laughs>